So I'm in the middle of painting the second panel now. Similar to the first, of course, there's not as much of a black area in this painting as there was in the first, but I'll still approach it the same way. I've done a heavy foundation of French ultramarine blue, blended that with uh, ivory black. This has also gotten that uh, coat of glaze, actually, of the burnt umber mixed with alizarin crimson, a little alkyd glaze, and thinner to give it that reddish brown cast over top of the blue black foundation. Uh, you can see I've pretty much finished this area over here. Still have all this and this to go. And I'll uh, take some detailed photos as I go along. So the second panel is complete. All I have to do now is give it that final honey colored glaze that I gave the first panel. That'll give a consistent uh, quality to the surface that doesn't antique it necessarily, but gives it a nice warm, uh, consistent glaze without really affecting what I've done. It's, the, it's so thin, or at least the color is so spare in that glaze, that varnish, that it really will do nothing more than uh, create a inconspicuous, consistent finish to the entire painting. Uh, even if I were working in latex, I like to do what I call a dishwater wash. That's after I finish painting, I'll take my wash water that I have been washing my brushes in, and it usually turns out to be a dirty brown gray mix of just about every color you can imagine, and do a, a wash over the entire thing for the same purpose. I'll show you some detailed shots of this. We'll talk about color mixing. Pretty basic palette here. Um, the French ultramarine, of course, and the uh, black, ivory black, the uh, cadmium red, deep, raw umber, and uh, raw sienna. Raw sienna's got to be the most valuable pigment ever. And occasionally I've found that uh, Manet must have used some cadmium red. Uh, mediums pigment, uh, Naples yellow and a uh, cadmium yellow. It's very in, infrequent that I've found a need for the cadmium red or the Naples yellow, but he occasionally has used it in background areas. Here, for example, in this bottle which happens to be this bottle in the background of the panel that I'm painting now. Uh, the yellow, the Naples, he's used in here to uh, pump up some highlights. Here's probably the cadmium red. The cadmium red deeps are in here. You see that little, uh, that uh, purplish red color. This has been the uh, a mix of the Naples yellow and the uh, raw sienna. When I get to her, raw sienna is probably the best color to use for flesh tones. And then along with that raw sienna, I'll probably mix into that probably the cadmium red medium. I tend to, in my color work, use a very basic palette of, of red, yellow, blue, black, and white. You can mix just about any color from that. Uh, violet, I find, is a very valuable color to have on hand because you can't really mix a good violet. So all of these colors that you're seeing in here have been mixed from that uh, limited palette. Uh, like I said, I like to keep my palette limited. That gives me the capability of mixing all my colors from just a few colors. The advantage to that is that all of the colors that you mix will be related to all the other colors that you've been using. 
Uh, I don't like to use a lot of out of tube or out of can colors. You can see up here a, a very wide range of uh, colors that are pre-mixed. Those are quartz of latex in different finishes and different colors. Now, if I were to start this Manet in latex, I would pick probably one, two, three, four, five, six of those cans and work from there. I would choose these same colors, red, yellow, blue, black, white, a nice umber, and a raw sienna. And if I needed it, a violet. It's nice to have a variety of brushes on hand, depending on uh, the, the size of the detail that you're working with. And another thing that's handy is to keep uh, containers that you've used and emptied. I like um, cottage cheese containers, sour cream containers, yogurt cups, because they usually have lids that you can seal things back up with. So, uh, here's some detail shots of the second panel. So now that the second panel's finished and dried after a few days, I'm ready to put the final varnish on top. That's the varnish made from the uh, urethane varnish, uh, clear, dull varnish, mixed with some, a mix of some honey-colored oil pigments. Not a lot. The pigments are very spare. This final varnish will not only seal the painting, but will give it a consistent overall tone that's hardly noticeable actually but it will blend a, a consistency to everything everything will be tied together with this one trans very translucent golden honey colored varnish this is the varnish that I've mixed you can see the color and you can see possibly how thin it is. It's very translucent. But when this goes on top of this painting, it will lend that certain golden quality to the entire surface without really being seen, except to the very trained eyes. It'll also catch in um, some of the heavy brush areas and lend it some depth, textural depth as well. This is drying. I don't know if you can see the quality of the final tone that that honey colored varnish adds, but it adds a certain antiqueness to it and golden, a consistent golden tone without really reading that way. It, it, it makes it appear less fresh, more aged, without really being so.